welcome to episode 5 of the Budget Knitter Podcast. My name is Will Sparger, I am your host, and I have a lot to show you today, so I just want to jump right into it. So if you're new to my channel, um, my name is Will Sparger, I am W Sparger Knits on Ravelry, I am at Will M M S U on Instagram, and I am at Will Sparger 9455 on Twitter. I will put those in the video description box below so that you can follow me and connect with me and see all of the other fun things that I am up to. So, mm, today is Friday, Friday the 13th. <gasps> And I got off work early, so I decided that I would film this on Friday instead of Saturday to give kind of a little bit of free time for me this weekend, because um, I got a lot going on. Uh, so a few things that I'm up to. If you are just new to my channel or you didn't catch my last video, there's a giveaway going on on my previous video where I'm celebrating having over 400 subscribers. Uh, when I just checked a couple of minutes ago, I had 432 subscribers. Thank you so much for your continued support. That really means a lot to me, especially since I never thought I'd get as many subscribers as I have. So I am so, so appreciative of you guys and the community um, that we are continuing to build within the uh, knitting and crocheting and crafting universe. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. So uh, the giveaway, I'm gonna put a link to the video uh, below because I want you to go there and I want you to be a subscriber and I want you to like that video and I want you to leave me a comment. Just say hi, let me know some of the projects you're working on, anything like that. If all you wanna do is say hello, that, perf that counts. Um, you'll be entered. So what I'm giving away is a pattern that I wrote, and if you've been following my podcast for a little bit, you'll know about this pattern. Um, but it's for a table runner. It's called the Autumn Leaves Falling Lace, uh, or Autumn Falling Leaves Lace Table Runner. It's a couple of different uh, patterns that I found that really worked together, and so I combined them. And uh, I've actually been test knitting it myself, but for reaching 400, 400 subscribers, which I thought was a huge milestone, I decided that I'm going to give away two copies of that pattern. So if you'll go over to that video, um, which I'll have linked below, you can go there and leave me a comment and subscribe and like, and then I will reveal the winners of the pattern on my October 28th podcast. That's going to be three, two weeks from tomorrow. So two weeks from, what is tomorrow, the 14th? Yeah, two weeks from the 14th, so the 28th of October. It's the Saturday before Halloween, all right? So I will be giving away that pattern. If you want to be entered for a chance to win, please go to that video. Uh, from there, this is October, and in my last podcast, uh, not the giveaway video, but the uh, podcast before that from two weeks ago, um, I talked a little bit about how I am prepping for National Novel Writing Month. So October in the NaNoWriMo community is called Preptober. So that's where you get your characters together and you kind of get your outline. You're really starting to put all the ideas together that you want for your story. Um, I talked about this for a really long time, actually, last time. And I believe somebody even left me a comment and said, Oh, I thought this was a knitting podcast, but apparently it's a book podcast. Um, so, <laughs> if you were that person, I apologize that you didn't get exactly what you were looking for in a little bit of the video, but if you do watch the whole video, there is some knitting in there. Um, <laughs> not a whole lot, sorry, but there is some in there. Um, anyway, I have a lot of hobbies. I like model trains, I like to write, I like to read, I like to knit, I like to crochet, I like to sit on my sofa and watch TV. Occasionally I find myself liking to cook. There's a lot of things that I like to do and I like to share that with you. And one thing I really like about this community is that all of us do other things other than knitting. Like knitting is not necessarily all that we are. And so it's really great to be able to share the other things that I enjoy doing. And I think that the community really um, comes together when we use our creative minds to do other things as well. And I think the community is really positive in that aspect in that we like to see all of the creative things you can do, not just your knitting or crocheting or yarn crafting. Um, 
So anyway, Preptober for National Novel Writing Month. If you don't know what that is, I'm going to uh, link their website below. Uh, National Novel Writing Month, every year writers from around the world sit down and attempt to write 50,000 words in 30 days. I did it last year and I did reach the goal. I didn't finish my story, but I did reach the goal. This year my plan is to have the whole story planned out and ready to go so that it doesn't take me four hours every night after work to get my uh, daily word count. So I'm really, that's what I'm doing right now. So I've got my story idea, I've got the cover idea, I've got the synopsis, I've got an outline going, and this weekend I plan to have all of my character mapping done so that I am ready to go and uh, put a more detailed outline together so that when November 1st hits I am ready to hit the paper, just ready to go. Um, so that's uh, part of what I'm also doing this month. Uh, and then on top of that, I am also a musician, for some of the, you that didn't know, I was a music major uh, with woodwinds, all except oboe. Sorry, oboe players. Um, so I've been in a flute choir, if you've been watching me for a while, you know that as well. Um, but I also just like to kind of play arrangements with myself, and I use GarageBand on my computer and my iPad to just record arrangements from time to time. And so recently I've been doing some flute, uh, flute arrangements, um, from flute choir where I for some reason have all of the parts so um, I've just been kind of playing around with those and I've got some like preliminary recordings down and I'd eventually I will go and make them a little bit more professional right now they're kind of like I was just kind of reading it and going for it just to get an idea of what it sounds like but I'm you know that's something else that I'm working on which I'm really excited about so anyway <laughs> let's get right into Finished objects, I have some exciting news. I finished the crochet blanket. That massive Brene blanket yarn crochet blanket. It is done, it is on my bed. It is too big to show on the screen here, but I am going to insert some pictures so that you can see. Um, I'll even put some of the progress in there so that you can see what it took from beginning to end. It took me, oh, three, three months? Well, basically since I started this podcast, so this is episode five, so about two and a half months to complete that blanket once I picked it back up. So uh, I'm really, uh, and it is wonderfully warm, and what I really like about it is it's actually kind of heavy, and so I laid it down on top of the other blankets I already have on my bed, and it just, it weighs down, and it's... If you know what a gravity blanket is, or weighted blankets, it's very much, it's similar to that when added with other blankets, um, but it itself probably weighs somewhere five, somewhere in the five to ten pound range. Um, so when you, it, that's laid across me, it's just so comforting, it feels very um, warm, and I feel very calm with it. So I'm very pleased to have that done. Um, so, I cannot believe how long that took, and I had maybe, maybe 50, about 50 yards, maybe about, 50 is really long, I had maybe 10 yards of that yarn left over, but I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to make it one more row, so I went ahead and cut it. Um, but again, uh, pictures have been going, if not now, they were going previously, uh, so you can see that that is finally done. The next thing, I talked about this in my previous podcast, I finished the sweater. And I told you that if you had been on my Instagram, you saw the finished, pro the finished product. But uh, I did get several comments saying that you wanted to see me wearing it. So I am going to wear it for you. Um, because I realized that not everybody has social media and not everybody has, especially Instagram. Uh, so I did show the sweater, I just didn't show it on. So again, this is the sweater that I did complete. Very excited about it. Um, I did tell you that it was a little small, but I am gonna go ahead and put it on because it's actually getting to that time of year to where I can actually finally wear sweaters in Las Vegas. So, I gotta get it situated, I'm not... Eh. Okay, so this is on. It is, again, a little small. Then again, I'm also a little bit bigger than I planned for when I knit the sweater, but I did get it to stretch down and sit at the waist like I wanted it to. 
and um, it's very soft, it's very warm. I wish I'd done the collar a little bit higher because it sits pretty wide, it's very boat necked and I don't really like that. But I'm very pleased with the final product. I barely messed up anywhere, everything is holding together really well, it's seamed well, it just, it, it fits. And the idea is that I'm finally going to start using my gym membership and actually be able to fit into it at some point. So, um, yeah, I, so this is me wearing the sweater. And I think for the rest of the podcast, I will wear it for you because getting it off is actually a little harder than getting it on. Um, so that brings me actually to my third finished object. And I forgot about these when I originally started the podcast uh, because I'd made them a while ago. And by a while ago, I mean like, March. Um, but I do have a pair of socks. Um, now, this is actually the same yarn. This is the Lion Brand Mandala yarn, but of course it it's striping, but it doesn't really do repeats. So this is one pair of socks, they just don't match. Uh, they match in pattern and in um, yarn, but they don't match in color. Now, um, I want to talk a little bit about why I like them and why I don't wear them all the time. First of all, they're an acrylic, so they're really hot to wear, which is going to be fine for the winter season when I'm just, like, at home. Um, second, the cuff. It looks like ribbing, but it's not. If you'll notice, it's actually the same eye of partridge um, that people use for their heel flaps. And the reason I did that is I wanted something that was thick, that looked nice, but also was um, not as stretchy. And that's what I got. The problem is the first time I started knitting these, um, it's actually still on needles somewhere, I didn't use enough stitches because the eye of partridge does not really stretch. And I couldn't get it around my foot, so I had to go back and do it again. And once I figured it out, I was fine. But I will not be using Eye of Partridge for a cuff again. Um, but anyway, yeah, this was the first pair I ever completed, and I'm very, very thrilled with how they turned out. They actually fit perfectly for having barely measured them. Um, so yeah, that is object, finish object number three. Um, that actually is the end of my finished objects. Uh, so, works in progress. I have two that I want to show you. If you remember, last podcast I started a sock um, on a super fine acrylic and nylon blend by Loops and Threads called Wool Like. And I was doing it on a 9-inch circular. If you follow me on Instagram, you've seen it. But uh, the reason I was knitting it is because I wanted to try the Fish Lips Kiss Heel. Well, I'm happy to say that I am on the foot of this sock. Now, it is a very tall sock. The reason for that being is I wear socks mostly when I'm at work. And I have to dress business casual, so I tend to wear dress socks. Dress socks. Um, so I need this to come up about halfway up my leg. Well, my calf is about 12 inches around. So this is 90 stitches. My gauge is 90 stitches, or 9 stitches per inch with this yarn. Um, so when it stretches, it fits about 12 inches. But the rest of my foot and the area around my ankle is not that wide. So I actually had to do a decrease here down to the heel and then do my heel turn. So I started with 90 stitches, and I am now on 72 stitches, and I'm gonna keep that for the length of the foot. So I don't remember where I was last time. I think I was maybe about here on my last podcast, so I have made it this far in two weeks, and that's working on that blanket and a couple of other things. So uh, I'm really proud with that. The fish li This was my first time doing the Fish Lips Kiss Heel, and uh, I took it to Sin City Knits, where I go every Thursday, and uh, they actually really, they were really proud of me. They were like, that looks really great. It's actually pretty much perfect. Um, I did have a little bit of trouble when doing it. Uh, the twin stitch knit side 
um, that was actually harder than doing the twin stitch purl. And I was really surprised by that. It, on the knit side, I ended up having to pick up stitches because I kept dropping them. Um, but yeah, if you've never done the fish lips kiss heel, I implore you to go get that pattern and learn how to do it. The person who wrote the pattern also has tutorial videos on YouTube on how to do the specific techniques to get this heel done. Um, it's quick. There's no weird picking up, like having to do a wrap and turn or anything. It's actually really, really simple. Uh, so I recommend it. Um, I have not been able to try this on because my foot is wider than the 9 inch circular so I can't get it over my foot yet. Um, but I'm, with the measurements that I've done, I'm confident that it will fit. Uh, so hopefully in the next podcast, be looking to see whether or not I actually end up liking how this came out. Um, second work in progress. So the pattern that I'm giving away that I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I had not really test knit the pattern. And I realized that if I'm gonna be giving it away, I need to be giving a pattern that actually works. So, uh, again, I go to Sin City Knit Shop on Thursdays. They have their open knit night till uh, 9 p.m. So I took the pattern. I had gotten maybe halfway through the written part of it. I wanted to finish it. So I did. I finally got through the first pattern repeat. So it's written as 54. The main body of the pattern is like rows 7 through 54. That sounds right. Um, so I got through that much. Now I've cut my yarn because um, the yarn ball I was using was getting really loose and I wanted to recake it. But this is the first pattern repeat of the table runner. And um, I'm actually really excited about it. So the first 12 or so rows on here will be repeated at the end of the table runner but not throughout the um, table runner, throughout the main body. So now I would go back and start again on row seven, but uh, I'm very pleased with how this is turning out. When I first looked at it, I couldn't really tell how it looked, and I think the first time I showed it in some of these podcasts, you couldn't really see how it was gonna turn out, and it's still kind of hard to see, but um, it's really quite beautiful. The leaves on the sides, uh, perfectly accent this uh, pattern here in the middle. So for the two of the two people who win this, I'm really excited to be able to give you this pattern. Uh, I think it's going to be a beautiful addition to your fall uh, fall decor because that's how I designed it. Um, again, I'm knitting it in Karen Simply Soft Pumpkin on US nines, uh, and I use the circular just because it's easier to knit flat things on circulars for me. Um, but yeah, that's available or that will be once I finish the whole table runner and I'm okay with how it turned out I will be putting the pattern on Ravelry but uh, the two people who win the pattern are going to be getting it before anybody else does um, now I want to let you know that the pattern is not in it, I wouldn't say it's not easy it's just not mindless and I think I've talked about this before but it's you are gonna have to pay attention to what you're doing, and I found myself accidentally on the wrong row a couple of times and had to tink back. And this last time I got through it, I realized I had added um, where it should have been a knit one, I had wrote, written knit two, and I ended up being off one stitch across the middle section. So that was frustrating. Um, but I have finally gotten through it, I have fixed all of the kinks, I'm making the edits tonight and tomorrow, so it will be ready on October 28th for those two winners. So um, also if you like that pattern it will be available for free. Um, so I will let you know when I make that available to everybody. Um, so that's my works in progress. What I'd really like to do now, I'm kind of breezing through this because I really do have a lot. Um, and I, I'm all about podcasters who do like an hour or so, but I'm also the kind of person that I have to break those podcasts up and I can't watch them all in one sitting. So I don't want to be that kind of person that's recording like two hours worth of podcasts. Um, so moving on, I have some tool updates. Um, so what we're going to start with, uh, last podcast I showed you some of the yarn that Angel, uh, my favorite lady at Sin City Knit Shop, um, she gave me a bunch of yarn and I showed half of that last time. So I'm going to show the other half this time. 
and I'm going to pull out my fancy yarn storage bag. If you're new, this is a really cool tote. Actually, I believe my mom got these from Zulily. Um, Zulily changes their sales all of the time, um, but I think that's where she got these during one of their sales. Either that or there was another website. It's it's like Avon or Mary Kay, but it's for storage containers. Um, I think it's called my31.com. If I can find the correct website, I will put that in the video description box below uh, because there's all kinds of really cool storage things like this and there's some really cool utility totes and I think even some of them you can get, um, what's the word? Where you do an embellishment. It's gonna drive me nuts until I can think of it. I want to say engrave, but that's not what you do with yarn. Anyway, I'm pretty sure the word starts with an E. Emblazon? No, that's not an idiot. Anyway, embroider. <laughs> Why did that take so long? Embroider. And um, you can get different embroideries on it, you can customize it, and actually one of them had knitting needles and a ball on the side and said something about it being knitting time or something along those lines. Um, so if I can find that website, I will put that in the uh, description box below so that you can go take a look. Anyway, um, this brand is, oh no, there it is, it's 31, it says right in here. Yeah, 31, with a hyphen in between the two. I thought maybe the website was written on there. Um, anyway, so I believe that's where she got these. So, I can't really remember all the things I showed last time. I think they were in a different bag, actually. So if I sh show something that I've shown in a previous podcast, forgive me. So, last time she gave me Bern Bernay Baby Blanket. This is more Bernay Blanket, and I think she's got three left over. She gave me three left over. Yes. So these are that microfiber stuff again, and it is white, blue, and green. This is actually really cute. Um, I don't know, again, I don't know what I'm gonna use a lot of this for. There's a lot of really cool ideas running around in my head, but I'm the kind of person that, I like to have yarn, but I also like to use my yarn. So, I don't know what I'm gonna do with a lot of this yet. But this is super soft, I really love it. Um, so there's that. I might have to move some stuff. This is the, this is what I'm knitting the table runner out of. Karen Simply Soft, and the colorway is pumpkin. I have three skeins, well now two and a half, but um, yeah, I have a lot of this, and I probably won't use all of it, actually, now that I've gotten through that first pattern repeat, I may not use all of it. Quit, don't chew on cords. Puppy's still chewing on everything. Would you, why won't you take a nap like the other one? Uh, so next is, these are separate, but they weren't when I pulled them out. Um, so this is the same yarn, just one's bigger. There's blacks, browns, like teals, like reddish browns. It's really pretty, and it's actually pretty soft. It's a bulky yarn. I would say this is a five or a six. Um, I would probably make a scarf or a cowl out of this. This is just like something simple to show off the colors. That's what I really like that. Um, so I have these two of that, which is why it would have to be a small project because I don't really have anything else I could use with it that's the same. All right, then the majority of the rest of this yarn is the same brand. I just have, uh, so it's Loops and Threads Charisma, which is a 100% acrylic yarn. It's a size five, so this is a bulky. And I've got it in like a camouflage colorway, which is called Deep Woods. And then the other one is browns, blacks, grays, that type of thing. And this one is Ashes. There's about seven of these, and I only have one of these. Um, so that's actually, I think, the rest of it, because I think the rest of this I've shown before. Yeah, so the rest of this I've shown before. So that is an update on my yarn stash. 
Um, so there are a couple of tools that I want to show you now. Um, as you know, by the title of this podcast, I'm the budget knitter. And one thing about shopping on a budget is that a lot of my stuff are gifts. A lot of the things I receive are gifts. But on top of that, there are certain things that I get that are like one tool at a time every couple of weeks. Like I can't really afford to go out and spend 50, 60, 100 dollars on tools. I can maybe spare 10 to 15 dollars here or there like once a month. Um, so the first thing, actually you saw them earlier, I got my first set of sock blockers. These are Knitter's Pride, I got them on Amazon, I believe they were $14.99 plus shipping. Not shipping, tax. I have Amazon Prime, so I don't get charged shipping. Um, Amazon Prime though, $100 a year for Amazon Music, free two day shipping, sometimes one day shipping if you've got a warehouse that's local and they've got the product there. Um, I would really, Amazon Prime is wonderful. I, they have Amazon Music too, and some, or uh, Amazon Video, and sometimes they've got certain TV shows that are completely free to watch. Um, so anyway, sock blockers, these are the large size. I was so surprised when I got these. I did not realize how big these were. These are as big as my foot. And then I realized, oh, well, duh. They're supposed to be as big as your foot because you're blocking them to something that's the size of your foot. So these are the large size. Uh, they do come as two. Um, I've actually not used them to block socks yet because the only pair of socks I have were blocked previously on my foot. Um, so these actually haven't blocked anything. I really just used them to display. When I finish this, uh, the sock that I just showed you, um, I am going to block it on here because I need to know kind of how that's going to work. So sock blockers... $15 on Amazon. Uh, the next tools I got were a gift. I forget that my Notions bag is really thick. So I got the Knitter's Pride Nova Platina Double Pointed Needle Set. Um, I left the label in my bedroom, but... Um, this comes with US sizes 0, 1, 1 1.5, 2, 2.5, and 3. They are sets of 5. They come in this cute little carrying case. Um, the ones I got are completely smooth. All right, and I've already tried to use these ones. These are the completely smooth ones. Um, the nice thing about this case is that there's actually a little pouch in the front. Um, which is great, so if you've got like extra tools or anything you're keeping in there, you can. What I did though is because I had, um, I have a set of US sixes, and these are the cubics, if you can see there, they're square. Um, I keep those in here, and then I have a set of US 2.5s that are also cubics, which were uh, the double pointed I got before I received this set. Uh, so I keep these in here as well. Uh, just to keep all of my double points kind of in the same place. So, um, Knitter's Pride actually says that this is like the sock needle knitting set, um, which is probably what this will mainly be used for, what they'll mainly be used for anyway, either that or like hand warmers, stuff like that. Um, I'll be using the US ones when I get to the tip, to the toe of the sock I'm knitting and have to do the decreases because I'm not going to be able to continue doing that around the nine inch circular. Um, so I believe these were somewhere in the $25 to $30 range on Amazon, um, and I think that included tax. These, the, and I of course, I, again, I got the ones that are completely smooth, not the Cubics. The Cubics ones are a little bit more expensive. I don't remember how much exactly, but I do remember that they did cost a bit more. Um, but on top of that, the Cubics in the smaller sizes really hurt my hands. So I decided not to go with that set when I requested them. Um, and then the last thing I have, as some of you know, I really want to get into yarn dyeing. Well, in order to do that, you need a stainless steel pot that won't absorb the uh, acid dyes. Now I'm going to start with Kool-Aid because Kool-Aid seems safer to start with. 
because you have to have a mask to do the acid dyes, and I didn't think about that, and so when I and I just don't have all the tools that I need to start doing all that. But I went ahead and got my stainless steel stock pot. Now this is it's super thin. It's nothing special. Um, this was fifteen dollars on Amazon. It's one gallon, one and a half gallons. So I don't remember the size, but um, this should be perfect for just doing some really, really rudimentary yarn dyeing just to get me started to kind of perfect the technique before I do anything serious with it. So I've got that. Um, the great thing with this, and especially if I'm going to be using Kool-Aid to begin with, is that I can still cook food in it. And right now I'm a huge fan of spaghetti because it's really all I have. Um, so I kind of tend to cook spaghetti in bulk and... Uh, I haven't used this yet, but I probably will very soon. So um, that's the tools that I've updated. So stash and tool updates. Um, again, that's the Knitter's Pride Nova Platina sock needle knitting, uh, sock needle double pointed needle set. Um, that's the stock pot and of course the Knitter's Pride large sock blockers. They are plastic and they have a hole in the top so that you can hang them to dry when uh, your sock is dry. And of course the yarn from Angel. Thank you, Angel. I will have what you requested soon, I hope. Um, I'll keep you updated. She watches these all the time. If you're new, my friend Angel from Sin City Knits, she watches this podcast every time, so. Um, okay, moving forward. Uh, kind of where I want to go with the podcast, everything like that. Uh, so hopefully, I'm going to be having some guests soon. Uh, I know that my friend Devin would really like to join me for my podcast. Uh, I would like to have Angel on here at some point so you guys can meet her. Uh, she's been wonderful. She's been very helpful. And it's been really fun to watch her complete a lot of her projects on Thursday nights. Um, so hopefully I'm going to get some other people on here so that you can meet the people that I know. And uh, we can all continue to share our love of the craft. Um, also, so, um, I think I mentioned at one point, one of the yarns I had gotten was kind of like a calico colored thing. I got it from Angel. It's just a little ball of a worsted calico yarn, um, acrylic. And I mentioned that I thought I would probably knit like a little toy, like small toy cat out of it. Well, somebody sent me cat patterns on Ravelry. Um, I've added them to my library. I'm still figuring out Ravelry, forgive me. Um, <laughs> I kind of just keep track of everything on my own. I didn't realize Ravelry will do it for you. Um, so anyway, somebody sent me cat patterns. I think one of them's like Bean the Cat or something like that. Um, anyway, and I think the other one's called Window Windowsill Cat. It's, it's just a little thing that you sit in the window. So anyway, I am going to pick one of those up here really soon. Uh, probably not this week, maybe next week. We'll kind of see where I get with, like, the table runner and the sock. Um, so yeah, thank you for the person that sent me those cat patterns. I'm actually really excited, and I'm going to be printing them and putting them in my pattern binder. Uh, I don't know how many of you actually print out patterns and keep them, but I tend to keep paper patterns with me. It's just easier. I mean, I love having everything digitally. I mean, my iPad goes with me everywhere. But something about just having the paper seems, well, not so green, but it, it, there's just something about paper. There's something about paper that I love. And I try to use recycled paper as much as possible. So, um, yeah, so I will be printing those soon. Uh, so, oh, that reminds me. If you have patterns that you absolutely love, things you knit over and over again, things that you really, patterns that you really enjoy knitting, um, please feel free to send me links to those on Ravelry or any other way that you know how. Um, I would love to take a look at those and add them to my library or to my queue. Um, preferably, not preferably, but um, I am looking for a lot of things kind of tailored more on the masculine side. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be for men specifically, but just kind of on the masculine side, something that I can knit for me that I would want to wear. Like, I'm not going to be wearing a shawl, typically. I mean, unless unless it's kind of basic, but I'm not going to be wearing, like, the hearts shawl. It's beautiful, and I love it, and I absolutely enjoyed knitting it, and it's gorgeous, and I really... 
I don't want to give it away just because it is beautiful and it's kind of the first major project that I've ever finished, especially with lace. Um, but I'm not going to wear it. It just, it's not me. Um, so I want like masculine sweater patterns, cowl scarves, hats, uh, gloves or hand warmers, cardigans, uh, anything like that that's like unisex or masculine, I would absolutely love those things. But if you have something that's, you know, maybe a baby project or something that um, maybe you knit it for your mom or your daughter or something and uh, it's just a pattern that you really enjoy, feel free to send that to me as well because, you know, I'm not making things only for men. It's just that I tend to like to wear the things that I make. Um, so send me your patterns. I would love to see the patterns that you're knitting and what your favorites are. All right? Uh, so now it is time for my favorite things. First favorite thing, I am obsessed with caking yarn. Even if it comes in a skein or something that's easy to use, uh, like Karen Simply Soft is a center pull skein, you can do it and it's not going to be a big deal. But I love using a ball winder. Um, so I went to the knit shop and I used their ball winder to just uh, cake up some yarn because it's fun and yarn looks better caked. It really, like, you can get it in all sorts of ways. Hanks, balls, skeins, it just looks better in a cake. I don't, it's, ugh. and it's fun. I, I know it's weird, but it's fun. It's really fun to just cake up some yarn. Uh, so I spent a good portion of my time at the niche uh, caking up some yarn. In fact, um, the table runner, yarn, the Karen Simply Soft. That was actually, I was pulling it from the center, so it was getting loose anyway. So I went ahead and caked that up as well. Now, Sin City Knit Shop has three ball winders. Two of them are the $20 plastic ones that you can clamp to a table and that you can buy on Amazon. Uh, the other is this really big, beautifully made, hand crank wooden ball winder. I don't know how much it costs, but it looks really expensive, because I think it's handmade. I don't like it. I just, it cakes up where the cake is kind of like lopsided. And like where this is nice up and down, I've got cakes where it's like bulging over here and down here because it wound up really funny. And that ball winder does not like worsted yarn. So that's just kind of an interesting thing to keep in mind when you're looking for tools. You don't have to have the best tools. You don't have to have the best of the best of the best. You don't have to go spend $200 on a ball winder because the $20 one, in my opinion, does a lot better. Plus, it's portable and it clamps to almost any surface. So, in my opinion, save your money. Like, spending $200 on a ball winder that you're gonna use every now and then versus spend $20 on a bottle winder that you know is going to work and then you can spend the other $180 on yarn because you can't knit without yarn. You can ball wind without a $200 ball winder. So um, again, and that goes along with the whole budget knitter thing that we're doing here. Acrylic yarns. It's, this is acrylic. It's beautiful. It's soft. It's hot in here, but um, it's soft. It's gorgeous. It fits. And when you block it, it doesn't risk going back because natural fibers tend to do that sometimes. This has been ironed and when you iron and, well, okay. It has been steam ironed. And when you do that, you tend to, since acrylic is mostly a plastic, you melt some of the fibers in place. This is never going to lose its shape again. It's gorgeous. And so, fine, there are so many cool ways that you can do a lot of the things that people do and save your money. So that's why I am really excited. My mom is getting me the $20 ball winder for Christmas. She got it on accident, but she's giving it to me anyway. Um, but I'm really excited because that means that one, I don't have to get it. And two, I, I already know that it works. So I know that it's gonna do what I need it to do. And it's affordable and it's plastic, so if something were to happen, like it's a little bit more durable in my opinion. 
plastic you can kind of glue back together wood if you were to drop that and it were to break or something eh, you're kind of gonna probably have to get a new one um, so anyway yes uh, caking yarn caking yarn is definitely one of my favorite things uh, second favorite thing I never got to see Wonder Woman when it was in theaters but my husband bought me the blu-ray book the Target exclusive blu-ray book and I watched it about three times in a row and I love it. It's gorgeous, it's beautifully done, and it's such a beautiful story featuring a, f a female heroine showing how strong and capable women really are, and it displays it in a way that's not misogynistic or sexist. It's, it's a beautifully done movie. Um, if you haven't seen it, I recommend it. Go get it. Uh, I believe, at least in Las Vegas, we're out of the Target exclusive Blu-ray books, but some of you might be able to find them elsewhere. Um, get it, watch it, it's beautiful, it's a family movie. Family movie. Uh, I mean, there's things like war and, uh, you know, it is World War One, so keep that in mind, there's some violence. But uh, it's it's such a good movie. Please watch it, It's it's amazing. Third favorite thing. If you follow me on Instagram, I made a post about this. So I'm a huge Harry Potter fan, love Harry Potter. I've got like four different versions of the Hogwarts Express around here, but my favorite Harry Potter possessions other than my wands, um, I have them behind me. They're heavy though. They've been coming out with one of these a year. Shoot, I don't know if I can grab them. The illustrated editions of the books. So this one came out two years ago and I got it for Christmas. It's illustrated by Jim Kay. So there's just these beautiful, beautiful illustrations. And it's the whole book. I mean, it's the whole book, but these illustrations are absolutely gorgeous. So it's the whole story. There's Draco Malfoy. It's the whole story and it's just illustrated. And so this one, two years ago, I got that. And then last year, I waited in line. Oops, sorry, that was loud. I waited in line for number two, Chamber of Secrets. Again, beautiful, beautiful books. Beautiful pages. There's not a page in here that isn't gorgeous. And some of the illustrations are simple and just kind of fit in between the words, and some of them take up the entire page. It's, oh, this is, it's breathtaking, it's beautiful. Well, my husband decided to surprise me and uh, he happened to be at Target and I had forgotten, I had been planning and planning and planning to be there when it came out, but I forgot. The Prisoner of Azkaban came out on October 6th and I forgot, but he didn't and he was at Target and he picked it up. It's thicker because the Prisoner of Azkaban is a little bit of a longer story, but it's, I mean, it's just gorgeous. Now, of course, because this is a longer story to make it fit, they did kind of cut down on the illustrations, but still every, the, the pages are gorgeous. There are some places in here where like, they don't have writing on it at all. I think there was a couple pages in here where that happened, where they took, they took away, like they just did one big illustration on the page. I think it was maybe somewhere in the center. There are a couple chapters where there's no uh, illustrations at all. Where? Okay, so here's one where they talk about a Grindylow. And it's actually just more information about the creature. It has. I mean, the Grindylow's in this story, but it's just information about the creature. But then, the hippogriffs and Buckbeak. Like, just one full two-page illustration in the book. It's absolutely stunning. Uh, here's another one with Sirius Black. <laughs> I don't know where the glare is, but... Um, Barnes & Noble has it, Target has it, I'm sure Walmart has it. Oh, maybe Walmart doesn't have it. Um, anyway, they're, they're gorgeous. Yes, they're a little expensive, but 
They're breathtaking. If you love Harry Potter, these are a must-have. Um, especially if you plan on sharing it with your children or your grandchildren or nieces, nephews, whoever in the future. This is just a great way to immerse them even more in the stories. Um, not only do they get to hear about the magical world, they can see it now without watching the movies. I definitely love the movies. I encourage you to watch the movies, but um, I advocate for reading first. I advocate for reading because if you don't read, you don't train your imagination to create, and I think we're a little low on creativity sometimes in this world. So this, if you want your kids to enjoy the world that is Harry Potter, I encourage getting the illustrated editions. So, Harry Potter, favorite thing. Harry Potter Illustrated Edition's favorite thing. Um, all right. That is everything I have for you today. Um, I was able to keep it under an hour, thank goodness. Uh, <laughs> so, thank you again. Thank you again for your continued support. Please like, subscribe, share my videos if you think that this is something that other people might be interested in. I do try to keep everything at the budget angle, um, only because I know that not everybody can ha has like hundreds of thousands of dollars to spend on tools and yarn. Um, it's about what you're able to do and then finding creative ways to do things do the same things but in different ways that you can manage so um yeah i just whew, it's been a long night it's been a long week <laughs> um so anyway again thank you you can find links to a lot of the things uh, that i talked about below let me know if there's anything you want to hear about. Let me know about some of your projects. If you have any questions, please feel free to uh, leave a comment in the comment section below, or you can uh, find me on Instagram or Twitter. Send me a message or a question there. I would love to hear from you. Um, other than that, it's October. It's spooky time. Oh, so that reminds me, when I do my pattern giveaway on October 28th, I will be doing a costume reveal because I will also be going to a Halloween party that evening. Um, so I will wear the costume that I plan to wear for Halloween and uh, you will get to see that as part of my podcast. So I'm really looking forward to that as well. So um, if you want, leave me a comment about what you're gonna wear for Halloween or if you're going to dress up. Are you gonna go trick-or-treating? Are you gonna go to a haunted house? Let me know because uh, I love celebrating the holidays. Um, if you are instead celebrating All Hallows Eve versus uh, Halloween, uh, what about All Hallows Eve do you celebrate and how do you celebrate it? Um, my knowledge of All Hallows Eve has more to do with watching the TV show Charmed, but um, if that's something that you celebrate and said, I want to know more about that. Let me know what you do and how you celebrate that because um, I do find tradition to be uh, very interesting and I think that we could all stand uh, to continue learning about our past and not just about where we're going in the future. So, um, yeah, let me know how you're celebrating things uh, this month, and remember to stay crafty and have a good week, and I will be back next week. I believe I'm finally going to do a little bit about uh, some of the different yarns that I've used, because I know a lot of you are probably searching for something for a project. Um, so I am probably going to be doing a bit of a yarn review for next week, and then I will be back on the 28th with the winners of the giveaway and with my costume reveal, and hopefully with some new finished objects. So thank you for sticking with me for 50 minutes, and I hope you have a wonderful evening, and I will see you all again soon. Bye.